This hey, conference everybody. will now be recorded. There we go. Hey, everybody. It's Tammy DeLue here with the Safe Space Podcast. And I'm really excited about today's uh, program because we're catching up with an old friend of the uh, Safe Money Trends site, Andrew Winnett. Uh, I would say that I have known him, you know, a few years now and watched him really make huge strides strides in the financial services industry. Just amazing. And today he's going to be here to talk to us about a couple of things that he's doing. He's uh, how he's using books to grow his business. And also he's rebranding a little bit. So, hey, Andrew, how are you doing? I am excellent, Tammy. Thanks for having me. I'm going to turn my I'm going to turn my old self off because you all dressed up and everything. And I'm going to uh, <laughs> I'm going to carry my camera off and just focus on you right now because uh, you're doing some exciting things. So first of all, for people that don't know you, just briefly tell us a little bit about your background, where you're from and, and why you're in Nashville and things like that and, and what you do for people. Sure. Well, so I've been in the financial space um, off and on uh, since 2007. Uh, I actually, I was part of the global financial crisis. I worked at Wells Fargo during the time. It was a very, very intense time to be in banking, let me tell you. And uh, I was actually part of the problem, to be honest with you, Tammy. I was the guy saying, oh, dude, you got to invest in the stock. It's going to go to the moon, you know, and I was uh, just dipping my toes into the investing world and, uh, you know, we were very passionate about what we believed to be true and uh, got my friends to invest in this one stock, my family. And and uh, when the, the, the stock market crashed, when the global financial crisis hit, most everybody lost about 40 to 45 percent of their money as an average. However, we did not lose 40 to 45 percent. Uh, we lost everything. That stock went to zero. And it was extremely painful uh, to look my friends and my family in the eyes and say, I am so sorry, I was wrong. And it really made me consider, holy crud, what, you know, there has to be a better way. Like this, you know, you think you've got, you know, all your ducks in a row, you think that, you know, something is a for sure thing. And then all of a sudden, boom, the bottom falls out, you lose everything. Now, by the grace of God, I was just mini, I was just dipping my toes into that world. But the guy next to me at Wells Fargo at our local branch, he was big time and he had a couple hundred clients and I got to see firsthand good people, good folks in their 70s and 80s walking into that branch ready to physically fight this advisor next to me because this Yahoo lost 40% of their money and they knew they were going to have to go back on their feet you know, standing on their feet for eight hours a day at Lowe's or Home Depot or Starbucks, you know, with some weird boss that has a face tattoo and a lip ring. And, you know, that was their new life. No more traveling, no more, you know, golfing wherever they want, no more hanging out with the grandbabies at a, a moment's notice. This, they have to go back to work. <clears throat> and I got to see age discrimination is very, very real. You know, you may have made six figures plus in your, you know, your peak earning years, but trying to get a six figure job in your 70s and 80s, it is tough and it's almost impossible. So it, it was just, it was all bad. You know, th these things were really difficult to, to watch. And then shortly thereafter, my dad died at the young age of 45, <clears throat> left my mom in a pretty bad financial pickle. Uh, didn't leave her destitute but he but he left her hanging and uh all of a sudden my mom you know who hadn't worked in 20 years well she did work she raised us three hellions uh all of a sudden is faced with some pretty sub substantial choices like she gets this life insurance death benefit from my dad has no idea what to do with it it wasn't millions of dollars i wish it was and she's faced with a a, a classic financial pickle Right? Does she take this money, pay off her four hundred thousand dollar home, and have nothing to live on? Does she invest this money and basically not not have enough money? She has to go back to work. Clearly, she's still raising my younger brother and younger sister who are still at the house. I'm out on my own, married, got a great job. I'm doing just fine. 
climb the ladder. But what about my family? What about my younger brother, younger sister? She had no idea what to do. So she did what most people do when they get a windfall of cash. She goes down to her local Edward Jones, Ameriprise, Raymond James, Pershing, right? Morgan Stanley, Fidelity, Charles Schwab, you name, you name it. You fill in the blank. And she goes to this financial advisor and financial advisor runs this little risk lice test. And oh my gosh, Suzanne, you have a very low risk tolerance, right? You should only be in 14% equities and the rest in fixed income and bonds. And my mom has no idea what to do. So she trusts her implicitly and says, okay, here's all the money I have. And that advisor invested in the market. And I'm at my mom's house uh, about a quarter, I don't know, a little while later. And I'm, I'm checking in with my mom, having dinner, seeing how she's doing. I said, mom, I want to see that. I want to see that statement. You know, let me look at that statement. I'm trained in this, this world. I want to know, you know, what's going on. And I'm looking at the statement. I cannot believe what I'm seeing. I am shocked. And I come to discover that every penny that my mom had earned in interest was completely eaten up by advisor fees. And when I saw that, Tammy, I hit the roof. I was so angry. Like, this is my mom. Wow. And Nobody this is actually not an outlier, is it? This, this happens all the time. It really does, unfortunately. It really does. It's a shame. And, uh, you know, my mom, you know, just to give you context, she was so stressed. She was losing her hair. She had to, she was working at a minimum wage job trying to raise my brother and sister and keep the plate spinning and that wasn't working. So then she goes back to school because she feels like she needs to get a relevant degree to get, make more money. And that wasn't working. And so then she ends up having to have my my grandma, her mom move in to help make the payments. It was so tough, so tough. And then to see all the interest, she still exposed all this risk. And keep in mind, this is right after the global financial crisis. So we're worried like, is this going to happen again? Are we going to lose 40% of my mom's money? Like, and when I saw how much she was paying that advisor, I am I was so mad. I was so livid. And so that frustration, that righteous indignation set me on a path where I had to discover alternatives. There had to be a better way, right? Where my mom could get off this Wall, Wall Street roller coaster, that she wouldn't be so exposed to the ebbs and the flows of the market. She was, she figured she was going to work for the rest of her life. Well, that frustration set me on a path and I had to discover alternatives for my mom. There had to be a better way where she could participate in market upside without the downside. There had to be a better way where her income would increase to help offset inflation. After all, inflation is the biggest monkey wrench in everybody's financial plan. There had to be a way where she could acquire long-term care for about 25% of what it would have otherwise cost with a standalone long-term care policy. Long-term care is the number one cause of bankruptcy in America. Seven out of 10 people will find themselves in a long-term care situation before they pass. And yet it's one of the most unaffordable insurance coverages you can ever look into. So we needed to find alternatives for my mom. And I'm, Pleased to say, you know, long story short, if you fast forward to present day, my mom now makes $70,000 per year. Her income increases every single year to help offset inflation. Uh, she was able to acquire long-term care for about 25% of what it would normally cost. Uh, she was able to retire years earlier than she thought. Uh, she bought real estate. She travels and hangs out with all the grandbabies. She's really into sewing, so she's a part of all these quilt guilds and things like that. She's living the dream. And you know what? Finally, here we are almost, what, 14 years later, she's finally on the hunt for a new man. And I'll tell you, it couldn't come soon enough. We've had a lot of weirdos from, uh, from you know, eHarmony and Match.com. So if there's any eligible bachelors out there that have some character, I want to vet you, right? I'll hook you up with my mom. She should, anyway. she should have signed up for the Golden Bachelor. The new Maybe show. she should have. She that, should that's have, a good yeah. idea. That was a good idea. So you were actually in California when most of this happened, right? And then you decided to make the move to Nashville. Yeah. How yeah, was that? I, that I, had to be sort of a culture shock for you. <laughs> a good one. A good culture shock. California is a great place to be from. You know, I Far traveled. <laughs> yeah, 
I, I, I travel to California fairly often. I've got a mastermind out in Santa Barbara, so I'm there every quarter at least. And, uh, you know, I've been in San Diego a couple times recently. Just love it. You know, California is a wonderful spot, but unfortunately, politics, taxes, you know, they're destroying bad stewardship. They're destroying probably one of the greatest states in the world. Ever. I mean, it's, uh, ever. It's been, it's, I've lived here all my adult life and it's just uh, kind of tragic. Absolutely yeah, right. So you, you moved here to, uh, you know, Nashville where people have a little more common sense and, uh, Yes. Yes, indeed. I, I agree. I will say, um, you know, that revelation uh, yeah, of helping I mean, my mom. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say there's a problem with the Internet right now and you're breaking up a little okay. bit on the video side. So uh, I know we'll just keep it going because I'll have it all edited out. But um, okay. yeah, we've got we've got some issues here and now I'm getting pixelation. Um, sometimes what happens, just so you know, uh, is that. Sometimes if you're internet cutting spin. in and out, Tammy. I'm yeah, there we go. Time here. There you go. So the internet is acting up, but we'll we'll uh, have somebody edit this for me. But as you were saying, the um, a lot of things make it hard to do business in California. So now you're over in Nashville, oh. and you yep. are building up a business. And so, what did you do to first of all before we talk about you? What did you do exactly? Oh God! What did you do exactly to build that up until you got to a point? Till you got to jump, you know, till you got a point where you wanted to go national. Yeah. So you know that revelation of helping my mother uh, set me on a journey where I realized, holy crud, there's some really amazing products out there that are more safety driven, where my mom can participate in market upside without the downside. Uh, we can help my mom retire years earlier than she thought. Uh, you can acquire long-term care for cheaper than I ever imagined. There's all these incredible benefits. Why isn't anybody doing this? And there were people doing it, but it was there was just the Wall Street marketing machine cast aspersions on this safe world because number one, they don't make as much money when they sell these products. They make about one tenth of what they would otherwise make when they, uh, you know, keep your assets under management. You know, they they can, you know, if, let's say you have a million bucks, they're going to charge between one and two percent. That's between ten and twenty thousand dollars a year, whether your money goes up or down. You do that over thirty years, you do the math. That's three to six hundred thousand dollars. And then if they turn around and sell it, they get a ten x multiple on their book of business. So no wonder they cast aspersions on safety and they're telling you the same BS slogans, you know, oh, the market's down, but it's just a paper loss, right? Well, they never say it's a paper gain when the market's up. You know, if, if, uh, if for example, the market's down, they're like, listen, we could do tax loss harvesting. You should be thanking me, Mr. and Mrs. Smith for losing money because now you're going to save money on taxes. Or they'll say, you know what? You should dollar. I know the market's down. You should buy more. Let's buy more. We don't know if the market's done going down. Just buy more. Your dollar cost average, right? It, it, it's just they've convinced us, convinced us that this is the best way of doing retirement. And it's no wonder that according to the National Bureau of Economic Research, uh, forty-six point one percent of every married couple in America will run out of money before they run out of life. And if you're a single individual, it's fifty-seven percent. Fifty-seven percent failure rate. Now wow. I don't know about you. I don't like those odds. I don't like, you know, <laughs> leaving the success or failure of my retirement up to a fifty-fifty coin flip. That's not good odds to me. I want something that's guaranteed. So we started a company to deal with those guarantees. We originally named it, I originally named it Legacy Builders Wealth Management in 2015. But as we've grown, you know, I've got six radio shows. I'm on CBS and NBC every weekend. Uh, I'm working on my third and fourth book. 
Um, I'm working on my second movie, which will be released in one month. There may be a third movie coming. I've got all these, these irons in the fire. We're getting so much um, interest on a national level. You know, we're having to build a massive office in Franklin because I don't have enough room where I'm at. And so the Legacy Builders Wealth Management name was awesome. It was sentimental, but it was long and it was kind of forgettable. And so we needed more of a national brand, which is uh, why we changed it to Retirement Renegade, because we do retirement differently. We don't lose people's money. And we don't charge advisor fees. We get paid commissions from the different companies we represent to take care of you for the rest of your life. And the commissions don't come out of your portfolio. So rather than paying three to $600,000 in fees, now you pay nothing. Now, listen, I could make 10 times more taking your money, putting it in the market, losing it potentially, and then charging you an exorbitant fee for it. But what I've decided to do is, listen, if we do what's right for people and they're happy as a clam and all the boxes are checked in their retirement plan, it's only human nature for them to go tell all their friends about the greatest thing since sliced bread, which is retirement renegade. So we end up making up in volume through referrals, what we would otherwise make, taking your money, putting it in the market like everyone else, losing it, and then charging you a big fee. So we're different. We want people to retire a renegade. Retire a renegade. It's pretty sad that you're considered a renegade if you don't wanna lose money. It's pretty sad that you don't wanna participate in any market downturn, and if that's you, you're weird and you're a renegade. And for most people, as they get closer to retirement, they want to be a renegade. They don't want to lose their hard-earned money. They don't want to have to go back to work after they've already retired. They don't want that. And so is, if that's you, you are a renegade. And Is this, uh, is this something, Andrew, that you're finding more and more and more people are just, they're like done? They're like, look, I can't afford to lose another single penny because the economy is so shaky right now. Are they, what are they saying to you? Well, there, it, it'd be like this. So in 2000, the turn of the century, if you were to invest 100,000 bucks in the S&P 500, which is the stock market, you would have not seen that same 100,000 until 2014. They call it the lost decade. We had the dot-com bubble and then we had the global financial crisis. It took 14 years for you to see that money again. Now, it would be like this, if it was Christmas Eve, right? And you know, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. And I go to my youngest son, Arrow, who's about to turn six this month. And I go to Arrow, my little muffin head, I love him so much. And I say, Arrow, are you so excited for Christmas? And he's like, yes, daddy, I'm so excited. He knows there's gifts down there and he's just can't even sleep. He's just levitating, you know, he's just so excited. And I go to him, and I say, Errol, 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 I, listen, I got some bad news. I know you were excited for Christmas tomorrow, and I was really excited about it as well. But I got, I got some bad news. Unfortunately, we're going to have to defer Christmas for 14 years. Now, how do you think that's going to go over? And the answer is, not well you know it's a it's a funny little analogy but imagine having to look yourself in the mirror I mean, your money's invested in the market and you were so excited for retirement and it, although you may not have to defer 14 years you may have to de defer four imagine having to look yourself and say i was so excited to to retire and travel and be with my loved ones and pursue the things that i know give me purpose and and fulfillment but I have to go back to work and defer retirement for four or six or eight years because we're in another stinking lost decade. And that's what's happening all the time. And so we're not everybody's retirement firm. We primarily deal with people who are within five years of retirement or five years after. They call it the red zone. And we are helping people to where there's no regrets. There's no surprises. There's only peace of mind. There's no retiring with any sort of fear. We take all of that out of the equation. So all it is is peace. 
It's just peaceful retirement. That's what it's all about. And that's why we renamed the company to Retirement Renegade. To Retirement Renegade. That reminds me of the old uh, the old uh, insurance mavericks. <laughs> you know, people are being mavericks. People are being, uh, tr they're looking for alternatives to everything, I think, out there. Um, yeah. Are, you know, how impactful is a high inflationary uh, cycle to a re someone who's just retired? I mean, what are the, what are the dangers that they face when they just, they've already decided to leave their work, not going back and here they are. Yeah. So, well, there, that's a, there, it can be a very long answer. I'll give you a short one. Um, so social security is for sure not going to keep up with inflation. Uh, their cost of living adjustments are pitiful. Uh, not to mention, according to Olivia Mitchell, who's in one of my movies, who is the foremost expert of Social Security in the world. Uh, Social Security is not just an American thing. Other countries have their own version of Social Security, although they don't call it that. They have their own names. But Social Security, as it stands today, will run out of money as of the time of this podcast. It's going to run out of money by 2033. And they're going to have to reduce benefits across the board by one third. Now, all of our clients are set up. We create social security stopgap funds. So when the reduction happens, not if, when, they will not experience any interruption in income. This thing kicks on and begins to pay them sometimes more than what they were uh, originally earning with social security. So inflation is a big problem. Uh, social security is gonna be a massive um, downer, right? It's gonna leave people discontented, depressed, and you know, disconcerted. It's not going to be there. I mean, especially if that's one of the biggest uh, income streams in retirement, you need to have alternatives. Um, the other problem that we're going to be running into in the years to come is we have what's called the uh, the lost decade around 2030. So we have a, such a swelling elderly population, they call it the silver-haired tsunami. Uh, we don't have enough taxpayers to cover the rising cost of Social Security, Social Security Disability, Medicare and Medicaid. Good. I'm so glad you mentioned demographics because that's the intractable issue right now. Can't fix yeah. that. Yeah. And so we're not the only country in this predicament. Uh, Japan is actually the worst in the entire world. China is just as bad a shape as we are. And, and because of their terrible one child policy around 1980, and then uh, Germany is in just as bad a shape. So between those four global powerhouses, America, China, Germany, and Japan, that's enough to take the entire global economy into a lost decade. So this happened with Japan for 30 years where their market was sideways. We're so used to seeing the market go up and up and up, we can't fathom another lost decade like we had from 2000 to 2009, and it took until 2014 for us to fully recover. It's, we have the memory of a goldfish in America. And so we just forget we have what's called normalcy bias, where we think, oh, things have been normal, you know, relatively normal the last, you know, decade. They're kind of normal today, although the market's really down and they'll be normal tomorrow, too. Right. And I go back to an old proverb out of the book of Proverbs written from the wisest man who ever lived besides Jesus, which was King Solomon. And he said twice. And if he says it twice, you really got to pay attention. He said it twice, that a prudent man or woman foresees calamity and prepares themselves for it, but the simple move forward and get punished. I saw good people that were not informed get punished during the global financial crisis. I believe that we have another one coming. Uh, you know, you reap what you sow. We have been the worst steward of our financial system, and the chickens are going to come home to roost. And so when they do, are you set up for success or are you vulnerable to the failures of our economic system? It's going to take millions of people by surprise and it's unnecessary. And so we are trying to get the word out there so that when this thing happens, all of our clients sleep like babies at night. They're happy as clams. My phone doesn't ring off the hook unless they're calling me to thank me because we don't lose any of our clients money. I cannot tell you how many good folks come into my office, shake my hand and say, you were right. You were right that the stock that I thought was going to go up, even Apple, 
or Tesla or whatever. And I'm like, hey, what is the purpose of this money? Is it for income? Is it for growth? Is it for safety? Is it for estate planning? Well, it's really for income. Okay, well, what if I showed you something that was cheaper? Uh, you could get more income and it was guaranteed. You're not you know, vulnerable and susceptible to the ebbs and flows. Yeah, but it's Apple. Yeah, but it's Tesla. And then f sure enough, year or two later, there's, man, I am so glad I listened, right? I Look at what it did recently. So the point is, is that it is a stone cold fact that there is a better way when it comes to retirement. We are following that. And uh, that's why we're going national because more and more people want it, right? That's perfect. It, it, Can, are, are you set up to do virtual then? Or like if somebody somebody in Nebraska wants to do business with you, they can just uh, set up. I mean, what you, describe a little bit your, your process. So a person says to you, you know, Andrea, I like what you're saying. I read your book. And, you know, you can give the names of those in just a second, but I read one of your books. I like what you have to say. What do I need to do next? Yeah. So I would go to retirementrenegade.com. Retirementrenegade.com. You can reach out to us. You can request our toolkit. So in that, we've got multiple books. I've got the Joseph Strategy, which uh, I built my entire firm off of that book. We're going to be renaming that book to Retire Without Fear shortly. It's an Amazon best-selling book. <clears throat> I believe that Joseph in the Bible was the greatest financial advisor to ever live. Um, there's that old saying, if it's new, it's not true. And if it's true, it's not new. This is 3,500-year-old wisdom that has stood the test of time. And so we build our entire firm off of that book. We have a three-step process, three-meeting process. First meeting is management. You know, there's that old adage, what can be measured can be managed. So we take measurement or inventory and we, we fill this out. We have a, uh, it's actually, this is our new one because uh, again, we're in the process. So it's actually the peace retirement process and it's prepare, evaluate, analyze, create, and enjoy. And so we're going to take measurement or inventory <clears throat> and get a pulse on what's important to you. What are your goals, dreams, desires, concerns, and objectives in retirement? Uh, the first meeting takes an hour to an hour and 15 minutes if we're having too much fun. The second strategy is the second meeting, which we talk about in the book, which is financial wisdom. God gave Joseph financial wisdom divinely on how to prepare for an upcoming season of famine. I believe it doesn't matter who you are. We all go through seasons of abundance and we all go through seasons of famine. The financial wisdom stand, uh, uh, standpoint is we're going to take what we learned on the first meeting <clears throat> we're going to go into the second meeting. We're going to, number one, run a tax report. Taxes are so important. If your advisor doesn't do taxes and he shirks it off to some buddy or third party, you're already at a disadvantage. We do taxes, okay? Number two, if your advisor doesn't do estate planning, you need to get a second opinion because they don't understand the burden that could be left behind. So we do all of that. Long-term care planning, Medicare planning, Social Security optimization, uh, income planning, growth strategies, et cetera. We do all of it except lose your money and charge fees. But the second meeting, we're going to run a tax report so we can see if Roth conversion is a prudent strategy. Taxes are on sale right now. So a Roth conversion strategy could be a good idea. You'll get to see how much you're going to, you can anticipate spending in taxes down to the dollar for the rest of your life. That's the first thing we do on the second meeting. Second thing we do is we create a bulletproof retirement income plan. But in order to do that, we have to look at the income plan if you change nothing, right? So we're going to factor in Social Security getting cut by a third. We're going to factor in a realistic rate of inflation of between 4 and 5% because that's really what we're going to be facing. <clears throat> then you'll get to see, okay, based on everything you told us without any emotion, do I have surplus every month? Do I have deficit? Do I run out of money at a certain age? Will there be money left over for him or her if I die at this, this time? If you change nothing, this is your income plan. Then we do an apples to apples comparison. If you implement our peace process, what could your life look like? And then after you see this, very often people are like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. I totally want to do this. How do I get started? You checked off all the boxes. I'm not going to have the night sweats anymore because I'm not stressing out or I'm not checking the account. Oh my gosh, what is this administration doing today to destroy my you know, portfolio? I want to do this. This is what I've been looking for. Oh my gosh, you take care of everything. Let's do it. We do not move any money on the second meeting. 
okay? We frankly don't have enough time. Um, <clears throat> we, I usually book out weeks in advance. I've got appointments on the hour, every hour. We just don't have enough time to do that. The third meeting is designed to answer any other questions you may have. Now that you understand our process and what our recommendations are, then we can get started with uh, you becoming a client, starting the applications, and we don't charge for this. Most advisors are going to charge somewhere between $2,500 and $3,500 bucks to do what we're going to do for you. I don't like to do that. I think it's better to give than to receive. Well, we got to do it within reason because we got to take care of our existing clients, got to make sure our employees are taken care of. We've got a big, big office, building another one. And so we give everybody three meetings for free. And by then you will for sure know, okay, this is definitely what I've been looking for. Or let's part as friends. This is not a good fit. That is our process in its entirety. Wow, that's uh, that's really good, and, and I'm sure as a result of that, you do get those referrals. Even even people that feel like they're they don't fit your profile probably say, you know, but my uncle, you know, he probably could he probably could use this, or my son, or whatever. And I think that's that's really good because it, it leaves it leaves the door open. I've inter interviewed so many seniors who have had complaints about the pushiness and the pressure they feel when they go into financial services. So it's good to have somebody like there out there like Andrew. So again, he's not confined to Tennessee anymore. He's going to be bad nationwide, as they say. That's right. You know, he's going to be rocking rocking it, right? That's right. And I will say just to give you an idea, so there's probably over at least 1100 financial advisors in all of Middle Tennessee. There's a ton. For sure over 1000. We have the highest reviews of any financial advisor in all of Middle Tennessee, which is millions of people. And we have the highest reviews, not just on Google, but also on Better Business Bureau. And I think our results speak for themselves and it's only gonna increase. Again, we're creating a movement. This is the future of retirement planning. And you know what's fascinating, Tammy? I'll just kind of leave you with this. I thought all hell froze over when I discovered that Morgan Stanley and Merrill Lynch and Fidelity and Susie Orman and even Dave Ramsey are starting to recommend these safe products. What? No, not, no, no, not Dave Ramsey. Really? Not <laughs> Dave Ramsey. You can look at us. It's all. It's wow. on there. It's on there. Why wow. would they do that? The question you have to ask yourself is why? Because why they would they be recommending? these safe products, and I'll tell you the answer. It, when the global financial crisis happened and everybody across the board lost 40 to 45% of their money. So if you were with Morgan Stanley or Wells Fargo Advisors or whatever, and you lost 45%, you are super angry. You're pissed off. And you know what? Screw this organization. I'm leaving. I'm taking my money and going elsewhere. Even though you would have lost your money there too. There's a lot of musical chairs going on. A lot of people taking their entire account going elsewhere. These companies know what's coming and they would rather take a small haircut. Well, it's actually a larger haircut on the revenue that they would otherwise generate from keeping all of your money in the market. They'll say, hey, why don't you put some of your money in the safe product so that when it happens, we can at least go back and say, hey, we recommended this safe product. You didn't lose any money. And it's likelier that they will not lose the account when the next crisis happens. And so it's funny because they it's all about money to them, right? It's all about money. It's all it always is. The more I'm in this this industry, the more I realize that Wall Street is all about maximizing their own self-interest at the expense of the middle class. And even if it looks like they're recommending safe products for your best interest, it's really so they don't lose the account in the account in the next crisis, which they know is coming soon. So I've been saying this when it was unpopular and now it's becoming popular again, but I've been saying it when, you know, the, the, the world was against me, if you would, and now they're starting to come around. That's why I'm telling you it's the future because less than less, 90% of financial advisors can't even beat the S and P 500. So why are we paying all these fees to these advisors that just lose your money? And by the way, I came from that world. They do not manage your money as often as you think. They often don't even look at it, but once a quarter, if that. So they're not timing it very well. They're just accumulating 
assets under management. That's what they're doing. And that's why the service is so terrible. Once they, once you sign on the dotted line and the ink dries, you never hear from them again. I know that's, and that's ridiculous. I remember one senior told me that the, the reason she stuck with her advisor is because he called her back. It's a simple thing like that. Yep. That makes all the difference to people. And I want to thank you because I know I could talk to you all day because there are so many things going on in the yeah. world in addition to, to what we talked about, but it's good that you're rebranding again. It's going to be, renegade retirement renegade retirement renegade.com that's where you want to go and find out more about andrew and what he does and i'll tell you there's never been a better time in my opinion to hook up with a good solid advisor i think your people are going to need that going forward it's very hard to understand the things that are going on it's under it's hard to understand the fed and what the fed does and doesn't do and how that impacts you and it's just like a lot is being thrown at people right now and they really can't process it all. So when it's good to have a person like Andrew on your side that you can trust that you can go to and say, Hey, how is this decision going to affect our portfolio? Do we need to make adjustments? Do we need to rebalance? Uh, there's just a lot going on. So I just am so glad that I, I got to know Andrew and uh, that he's doing such a fabulous job. I knew he was going places. And I'm happy to see that he's going to be, uh, he's going to be a brand soon. You know, he'll be like up there with Charles Schwab, Schwab right? Everybody will know the right. name. People, That's people right. have bumper stickers with, you know, with your, uh, with your uh, renegade on the back of them. I Come do on. think you should get, I, I do think you should get a cool logo though, like something edgy. So, uh, I mean, as we far have as a like cool logo. It, it, I, mean, it, I mean, my it, mascot. It, it is yeah. pretty edgy already. So there it is. Well, the, the logo is, I mean, like yeah. a mascot, you know, somebody that could go to the oh. football games and, you, yeah. you know maybe we'll be the titans you know the national sponsor of the titans if they'll start winning <laughs> holy crud man we need oh i know stuff. yeah that's that's, a, well, that's, that's, own, that's his own together. story but anyway i want to thank you for being here i will uh obviously get this all edited and post for everybody make a few little shorts out of it and put pass it around because i think anybody can benefit from the kind of financial advice and you do have YouTube channels and all the social oh, yeah. media. So if yeah. people want to see some of your other videos, cause you're a very good presenter as Thank well, you. they can go and watch your videos. And so thanks, Andrew. I mean, you know, I'm really proud of you, you know, uh, you're, uh, you're repping California way out there in the South, but eventually <laughs> yeah. I, 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 you know, I think I still have a little bit of hope. I guess I'm a, a, a captive of hope. I'm a prisoner of hope because I do believe, that it's not too late for people to turn it around. So I hope so. I really and with, and with that, uh, I want to let you get back to your, your busy practice, but thank you very much. And I will be reaching out to you soon. Take care. Thanks, Dan. No problem.